fashionable, cultural, and fashionable. All right, and uh, next question I have is, um, how can a victim of sexual abuse recover from their experience? Hmm. So this is such a loaded question because when we want to fix something, we kind of think it just goes in a linear uh, way. And with this, it doesn't necessarily, I mean, to some degree it does. There are uh, things or, or ways that you can heal. Um, sexual abuse is so complex because it's a trauma that impacts a person to their very core. It strips their identity, their security, their level of trust, their innocence. It messes up relationships. It literally like destroys every part of a person. And in order to recover or to heal, a person must first know what has been broken and what has been lost um, because there, there's a grief here that now happens. So um, in the case of sexual abuse, there are typically five areas that have to be healed or have to experience recovery. That's the body, the emotions, thinking patterns, the relationships, and the spirit, person spirit. So I have maybe about 10 steps, I won't go too much into it for the sake of time, um, that will help a person recover from their experience of sexual abuse. And the first one is they have to make a decision to heal. Um, once they recognize the effects of the abuse on their life, they have to make an active commitment to heal. And that healing only happens when that person makes that commitment. The second way that they can heal is seek professional treatment or psychotherapy. So this is important because it gives you a safe place to express your experience with someone who can provide objective standpoints, who can provide evidence-based strategies that will eliminate or manage, help the person manage troubling symptoms so that a person can function better and increase their well-being. So number three, uh, they got to process the memories. So they got to remember at some point because many survivors uh, suppress all the memories. They suppress everything that happened, that happened to them as children. That's why some of this stuff comes out when they're adults. And those who don't forget the actual incidents often forget how they felt at the time. So there must be a getting back to the memory and the feeling of what happened. Number four, they got to believe that it happened. So people, you know, mainly adult survivors, they often doubt their own perceptions. They believe that they have trouble to, to believe that the abuse actually happened. So this is classic gaslighting right here because the abuser is telling them what happened, but what they're telling them is not true. So that's what causes them to question and doubt their own perceptions. Number five is like the big one, break the silence and tell your story. And that doesn't mean that you have to run and tell the world. You can tell someone that you trust or that you know to trust. You can tell your psychotherapist, I can't tell you how many women I have had over the years walk into my office and tell me you were the first person that I told. And these are women who are 20, who are 30, who are in their 60s, you know, never having mentioned anything. I've had a few men also coming to tell me and there's such shame, you know, with that. But in order that the antithesis of shame is exposure. So you want to give visibility and shed light to what happened to you that breaks the hold over you. Number six is understand that it wasn't your fault. And I kind of touched on this before, um, place the blame where it belongs. And that's on the shoulder of the abuser. Number seven is reconnect with the inner child. So we all have a little, a little, an inner little girl, inner little boy, you know, that comes out. We can be big kids at times, but what happens in sexual abuse and trauma is that that little girl or that little boy, they get completely traumatized and stunted. They get wounded. So that's really what, what trauma means. It means to wound. So they got wounded and they've lost touch with who they are and who they're vulnerable and what their vulnerabilities are. So the work then with a, a survivor is to reintegrate this wounded child with the nurturing adult, which is also who they have grown to be. You want to integrate those two things so that there will be an acceptance and self-compassion that the person gives to themselves and no longer the blame or the shame or the disgust. 
Um, number eight, you want to give yourself permission to emote. So essentially giving yourself permission to feel your emotions. Anger is a very powerful and liberating force, but it is often suppressed or turned inward um, with the survivor of abuse, they turn their anger inward instead of putting it where it belongs, which is on the abuser or even on family members who have allowed this abuse. Now, I'm not saying carry this abuse, you know, this anger throughout your life. You want to be able to release that and heal from it at some point because it can be damaging, but it is pivotal to heal for you to express that anger and also understanding that you had a major loss, you know, grieving is a way to acknowledge pain, let it go and move into the present. Number nine, you can uh, confront your abuser if you if you want to. Some people choose to, some people don't. Sometimes that's not possible because maybe the abuser died. Um, but if you decide to confront, you may also need to forgive. So directly confronting the abuser or the family it's not for everyone, but it can really be a dramatic and a helpful tool. And making the decision to release the person from having a consuming effect on your life is freedom. That's just freedom. And then the last step, I would say, uh, find resolution and move on. And that is, you know, taking all these steps and going through them over and over again to stabilize your feelings and your perspective. And once the person is able to come to terms with what happened to them, not approving of what happened to them, but come to terms through acknowledgement that this happened to me and whoever let this happen to me, it won't erase the history of what happened, but that person can then ascribe meaning to it and they can make deep and lasting changes in their life. So having gained awareness, compassion and power through healing, this person will then have the opportunity to work toward a better world and a better life for themselves. I feel like I feel, I feel like, feel like exp, you, you, you mentioned some some really important things because I'm, I'm listening keenly. Mm -hmm. But as as a person who who I reason with a lot of women mm -hmm. and a lot of them like op, open up because we always have some good discussion. And I realized that in majority of them along the process of healing, they get more educated along the process of healing. And while getting more educated, I think that there's a certain point when they, they tend to get more angrier during the healing. And it's, mm. and it, and it's like, it's like the, the, they've made 10 steps forward, but 11 steps backward. And that kind of stops the process. I've seen that, seen that so many times. Is there any advice to like most women who start to heal and then they feel like feel as if they're getting angry. How, how can they not let that anger stop them from going to the full length of you? So it's simple. It's simple, but not simple. Stick with the process. You know, everything is going to come out once you dig into this. And the, the thing about re the thing about recovery is there will likely be a relapse. And a relapse does not mean that you have failed. It does not mean that you've had this huge setback. It means that you need to get back on your horse and keep going in the way that you were supposed to be going. Sometimes people get stuck in their emotions because they don't know how to process through their emotions. They don't have the tools of emotional development and regulation. And that's why they get stuck in those areas and they don't move forward. So you can't get stuck in those emotions, but allow yourself to feel it. Be curious about what you feel. Why do I feel this angry? Why do I feel this disgusted? Why do I feel this shameful? Where did it come from? What have I now come to believe about myself because of this? What have I now come to believe about men or women because of this? Being curious about your emotional experience will really help you to navigate through your emotions and not get stuck. Thank you for watching I Never Knew TV. Please subscribe, comment, like, and share.